we could talk about are reptiles. Reptiles, again, are an amazingly diverse group. And we, in this case, have different evolutionary lines of reptiles that have different adaptations and move in different ways. To start with, we're going to talk about the snake. Dr. Nolte is holding Sandy, our snake here. Resident corn snake. Yes, and you can see she's moving, and to a large extent she's moving by changing the shape of her body, contracting on one side, relaxing on the other, and that helps her move. If you turn Sandy over and can look at her bottom side, see these big white uh, scales on her bottom that run all the way across the bottom? Those are called scoots, and those actually help give her traction to be able to move when she's laying on ground. Now, snakes are an evolutionary branch of vertebrates that in their evolutionary history, they became adapted to living below ground in tunnels and burrows. And basically, over time, there was selection against having legs. So if we look at the skeleton of a snake, we have a skeleton of a snake in here. I don't know if you can see through the glare. Um, basically, again, it's, it's somewhat similar to the fish. You have a big head, you have a bunch of vertebrates, and just ribs out the wazoo. <laughs> and in as much, that's the main, that's probably the characteristic of what a snake is, is that they have lots and lots of ribs. Some snakes will have what's called a vestigial pectoral girdle. Vestigial means reduced in size and no longer serving the function that it probably did in the evolutionary ancestors. So in some snakes, you can actually see a couple of little bones at the end of, in the pectoral region that are sticking out forming a pectoral girdle that no longer are big enough to form legs. But they've been lost in other snakes, that they no longer serve that function. Selection has selected against that trait being passed on, and we're left there. So again, snakes, for the most part, move by contracting the muscles on one side of their body, turning their body in that direction, and relaxing the sides on the other, and repeatedly doing that and moving in that same shape. And, and related back to the number of ribs, just picture that there's a separate muscle pair attached to each rib. And that's just why Sandy can create that intricate movement of twisting and bending. You think about coordinating the contraction of all those muscles across her body it allows her to create this type of locomotion. Now, the skeleton of a snake is not about protection at all. It's basically about hiding, being able to protect themselves. The snakes protect themselves by going into spaces that no anim other animals can occupy. And so they protect themselves in that way. They do not want to be seen. Um, so, are you impressed with Sandy's movement? I, like Sandy. um, I, I, I feel bad that all my students can't handle Sandy, um, but you'll have to do this virtually. <laughs> But can you're you tie free yourself? to go find your own snack. Yeah, can you, can you tie yourself in a knot like Sandy? <laughs> no. <laughs> so. Okay, let's move on. I might to, put Sandy. Okay. The next group I think we're going to talk about are turtles. Turtles, again, are a very unusual evolutionary group of snakes, or not snakes, of reptiles, that have evolved a shell, a bony carapace that surrounds their bodies that provides them with a huge amount of protection. The consequence of that again is that turtles, oh he's getting a turtle out, this is me. Turtles have the ability to move, almost all of their movement becomes because of the movement of their little legs. I'm not getting too near me because he might No, he's me. not very, he's not a happy camper, so. <laughs> He is this, a grouchy turtle. This is our resident um, red ear slider turtle, native to the Carolinas in the southern states. Um, so, and this turtle is probably at least 30 years old. Um, they can live a very long time. Now, in the case of the turtle, the ribs are fused with 
the shale. So he can't move his body in an S-shaped fashion at all. And the only way turtles can move is by moving their arms or legs back and forth. And you can see he's trying to do that right now. He's, he's pulling them back in every once in a while because we scare him. I don't know if we can film that for you. Um, we'll see, put him on the floor and see. It's very unhappy right now because he's probably, a, he's fearful. There's a fear response. And when animals are afraid, they become aggressive. See that kind of waddling motion as it's moving across the floor? Very awkward. Thinking about having all those fused bones. When you fuse bones, you lose flexibility and allow that, that restricts your, your motion. And so, but that's how a Oh, escaped. <laughs> Get away from us. So, that's how turtles move. Now, let's go back. Remember I told you, um, now this adaptation for, with the shell and all the fused bones, that's really about protection um, and not moving at all. Uh, a, a turtle is not going to outrace and outrun a predator. A turtle is going to protect himself by pulling everything back into this bony shell. So, it really is about protection and motion is not nearly as important to the turtle as it would be to the snake. So, okay. I, I think we're done with turtles. I yep. love turtles, they're neat animals. Uh, but we probably should move on. You know, what we're going to talk on next are lizards like our little friend Ozzy here. And if you look at Ozzy and particularly look at his uh, shoulder girdle, if you look, his arms, his humerus, sticks almost straight out from his body. It isn't sticking straight down. And the result is, to a certain extent, Ozzy, with those, those bones sticking straight out, has trouble supporting his body. You can see he's kind of leaning up right now, but his humerus is essentially directly out from his body, and that doesn't give it a good angle to support its weight. As a consequence to move, it essentially moves by moving its arms from the humerus down and sometimes again tilting its body and shifting its direction as it goes, first putting one arm down and then putting another arm down. There he goes. Yeah, he went for a little bit. Ozzy isn't the most active lizard we've ever had. He's kind of a laid back lizard. This is a desert lizard adapted to Australian deserts. It's not a tree dwelling lizard at all, so it's probably not the most agile mm -hmm. on, the, on the list of lizards, but he is adapted for moving on ground and finding a place to protect himself under a rock or, or in a burrow. So if we can convince Ozzy to move, we might see that motion that Dr. Williams was describing. Yeah, now, if we would have a, a lizard that was adapted for, for tree growth, like a Cuban anole, um, we probably couldn't capture it. It would be, it would escape very easy. They're extremely agile, so when they're adapted for life in the trees. Now, if we can get, there's, there's that motion Dr. Williams was describing, one leg forward and then the other. Can you can just perform a little bit. Thank you. There we go. Come on. Now go off the table, which you'll probably do. But. Get a little sense of that? That's, that's pretty good. Uh, I will add, in the evolution of reptiles, there are reptiles, such as Tyrannosaurus rex, that evolved to have their hip bones directly underneath them, pointing down, and they run much more like we do, mm -hmm. or would have ran much more like I do. They're all dead. <laughs> uh, so again, there's a tremendous amount of diversity in how reptiles move. 